Hey everyone, Dark Skeleton here, and today I'm continuing my level 1 tutorial on basic Hearthstone decks. And these decks only use the cards that are available to you immediately after finishing the tutorial. None of these cards come from packs. They're cards that are available to every single player. All you have to do is unlock the class. So today's class is the Warrior, which is the final class in the series. And Warrior is a class that can be played aggressively, but typically is played a little bit more defensively. Uh, simply because its hero power is good at surviving, but not good at controlling the board whatsoever. Uh, therefore, if you try to rush your opponent down, then what happens is you run out of cards and your hero power can't back you up at all. But if you play control, where you just play cards that get you more cards, then you end up with a big hand that allows you to go into the late game into your armor that your hero power provides you. It makes it so that you're too durable to be rushed down. So anyway, today's deck is somewhere in between, um, as many of these basic decks are, in that it runs a lot of 4, 5, or 6 cost minions that are kind of bulky and good at getting 2 for 1 trades, but it also makes use of some of, some of the uh, basic warrior cards. Including, to start things off, Execute, which is a very staple warrior card. This card can destroy any minion that has already taken damage on the field, and what makes it awesome is that it only even costs 1 mana. This means that you can combine it with something like the next card, Elven Archer, which deals 1 damage to any target on the field. You Elven Archer something big, so it has taken 1 point of damage, that's all you need for Execute to trigger, then you Execute it and it's gone for 2 mana. Uh, nice combo there. Next up we have Voodoo Doctor. It's a average card that has 2 attack, 1 health, but its battle cry effect allows you to restore 2 health to any target. Uh, this would be best used on your bigger minions, which this deck has quite a few of, such as a Kurubashi Berserker or a Sengen Shield Master to heal them back up. For only one mana getting that battle cry effect, if you get the full value of the effect, it's quite powerful. If you have no other targets on the field, just use it on yourself. Uh, worst case scenario is you're forced to play it on turn 1 just as a 2-1, which is pretty bad, but not the worst thing in the world. Next up we have Fiery Warax, aka Fiery Winax. Uh, this card might seem just okay at first glance, but it is a 3 attack weapon that has 2 durability, and what makes this so amazing is that at the turn you want to play it, ideally turn 2, but can be played later on quite effectively too, they're going to be playing minions that either have 2 or 3 hit points, so this axe is going to outright destroy whatever they play, and then on the following turn they're going to have to play something else or not play anything at all, and if they play something else, more than likely, it's going to die to this axe too. So it's very easy for this 2 mana axe to get 2 minions for 1, and using up some of your own hit points to take the blow is not that big of a deal. It's a fantastic card, you definitely want 2 of them in here. Next card is Heroic Strike, which is typically a card that's run in more aggressive warrior decks, in that it gives you 4 attack to your hero for this turn, which is pretty good value in terms of dealing damage. Um, a little bit iffy if you have to use it on a minion, and in this deck you probably will have to use it on minions, um, simply because there's not enough aggression in the basic set in order to rush anybody down. But if you do uh, need need it for minions, um, you can combine this with the Fiery War Axe to deal 7 damage with your warrior attack, or you could just use it on its own without a weapon to deal 4 damage to an enemy. Um, it's sort of versatile, so it's not too bad to have one of them in this deck. Next up, we have Acidic Swampoos. Um, I Throughout this series, I have rambled on and on about how amazing this card's battle cry effect is. Against other warriors, paladins, shamans, and rogues, this card will destroy their weapons and get massive amounts of value right then and there. Um, aside from its battle cry effect to destroy weapons for free, it's still a 3 attack, 2 health minion, which is about what you would expect out of a 2 drop, so it's a solid card even if you just play it on the field without its battle cry, but with the battle cry it becomes amazing. Next up we have a single novice engineer. Since warrior is a class that is kind of weak on drawing power, um, this card will allow you to keep uh, refreshing your hand a little bit uh, by drawing a card when you play it, and after you draw a card it's still a 1-1 on the field, which isn't terrible. It's an alright card. Next up we have Razor Fin Hunter, uh, two of them. And this card is good because it summons a 1-1 boar along with the Razor Fin, um, which means your total stats are going to be 3 attack and 4 health. Um, and this is quite good for 3 costs. You won't find too many minions that get those kinds of stats. Uh, so playing these, it's 
acceptable. The main weakness is that since you're playing two minions, it's kind of vulnerable to AoE. But it also has the benefit of having two minions, which, with the next card, Shattered Sun Cleric, allows you to choose which minion you want to trade into the enemy minions. And having additional minions on your board means you can really pick and choose who trades into who. In Shattered Sun Cleric, it gives a friendly minion plus one plus one when it's played. Its base stats are mediocre at three attack and two health. But um, when you combine it with something else on the field, it gets you pretty nice value. Next up we have Warsong Commander, a warrior specific minion, which when it's summoned, well actually as long as it's on the field, and you summon an additional minion that has three or less attack, it immediately gets charged. And this combines well with some of the cards um, I put in this deck later on that I'm going to get to in a minute. Speaking of which, uh, Dragonling Mechanic is one of those. It's not a fantastic card, I only put one of them in here. But I thought it would be interesting to combine it with Warsong Commander in that it is a minion that is a 2-4 that summons a 2-1 mechanical Dragonling, which is very similar to the Razorfin Hunter, but probably a little bit worse value stats-wise. Because uh, you would get a total of 4 attack and 5 health. It's the same as a Yeti, except that it's not, because that 2-1 Dragonling mechan um, mechanical Dragonling is very, very vulnerable to things like an Elven Archer. But, what it does bring is this means if you play this on the back of a Warsong Commander, you will have two minions to attack your opponent immediately with. And that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Next up we have No Mission Venter, another minion that only has two attacks, so it works with Warsong Commander. It's similar to the Novice Engineer in that it allows you to draw a card. Since you already have that free card getting added to your hand, if it trades into something and kills another minion, then that's just icing on the cake. Otherwise, it will at least damage something, but its stats aren't too bad. This thing is pretty decent at killing two cost minions, so you should be able to get some pretty decent value out of it when you combine it with the extra card in your hand. Next up, we have Sinjin Shieldmaster. Uh, this card is good at protecting your other things, and the reason I put it in the deck above Chillwind Yeti, which has an additional attack, is because uh, Sinjin Shieldmaster only has three attack, which means that it combo- it com combos with um, Warsong Commander. And in addition to that, it does have the Taunt, which is a trade-off for the extra point of attack. But that means, since it has three attack, you can combine it with Warsong Commander and charge it into anything you want, if you wish. At, at the very least, you can run it into the opponent's face for an extra three damage. But just on its own, Sinjin Shield Master is solid to begin with, so I have no qualms putting that in here. Next up, we have Dark Seal Healer, a card I consider underrated. Uh, this card has the same stats as the Chill and Yeti, 4 attack and 5 health, but it comes with the extra battle cry that when it's summoned, it, deal, it heals 2 health to all friendly characters, including your hero, for 1 extra mana cost. Um, since there aren't too many strong 5 drops, I feel this is a good fit for the deck, especially since it runs Sinjin Shieldmaster and No Mission Venter, which are likely to stay on the board for more than one turn and take damage while they're there without dying. So this can heal you guys back up, and that can get you some significant value in certain circumstances. Next up we have Kurabashi Berserker. This is a card that I haven't really been using too much in these basic decks, um, simply because it, while it has the potential to become huge and deadly, it is very manipulatable. So although it's a, it can become a huge minion, a smart opponent can really play around it and know, okay, I'm going to attack it so it's going to have 5 attack now, but only 5 HP. So you can run weak guys into it before it gets enraged, and then that weak guy only takes 2 HP of damage. And then you run something that just has a lot of attack into it, but not much HP. And the fact that it has 5 attack doesn't matter, because you just threw something at it that only has 2 hit points. So by playing around Gurubashi Berserker, it is an exploitable card. Um, but if you combine it with things like Dark Scale Healer to keep it around on the board longer, Elven Archer, uh, yes, you can Elven Archer your own Kurabashi Berserker, and there are circumstances where you may want to do that, just to get the three extra attack, such as finishing your opponent off. Um, but also, it combos with Warsong Commander, because when it hits the field, it's only two attack. Even though it can get bigger, it's still going to get that initial turn one, and that's good because that means you play it, when it only has two attack, you can kill a weak minion off, and then suddenly it becomes something like a 5-5, five, five having already killed a minion, and that can get you some pretty good value too. So I feel it's not too bad on a warrior. Next up we have Boulder Fist Ogre. 
This is a very good card. Um, I'm recommending it for pretty much all of the basic decks uh, because it has a great stat lineup. For six mana, you get six attack and seven health, which is equivalent to the Yeti, just a higher power, in that it has slightly less attack than it does health points. And since it has slightly less attack than health points, that means it's a card that's typically going to trade well with lower cost minions, such as a 4 or 5 Gurubashi Berserkers, um, a weakened one would die to this. Although, you probably don't want to run a Boulder Fist Ogre into a Gurubashi Berserker unless you have to. But um, things like a Dark Scale Healer will die instantly, Sinjin Shieldmaster die instantly, Gnomish Inventor die instantly, and then this thing is still going to have several health points left. So this card can 2 for 1 very easily, and that's why I put 2 of them in the deck. Lastly, we have a Singular Stormwind Champion. This deck runs a few cards that summon two minions at once, and then it also has some card draw like Gnomish Inventor, which is going to bring you in to more minions later on, and it has enough healing to keep your minions on the board. So if you play well, and you have the upper hand on your opponent, Stormwind Champion can kind of be a finishing blow, in that it will give your remaining minions plus one HP and plus one attack as soon as it hits the field and while it's there. Um, because it is a minion that buffs other minions, your opponents are going to be gunning for this thing. So if you have a Sinjin Shieldmaster in front of it to taunt the field, um, that will be quite nice. Not only because Sinjin Shieldmaster is going to get a buff to a 4-6 stat lineup, which is very solid, but also because it will protect your Stormwind Champion and all of your other weaker minions. So there you go. Um, I recommend just playing this very standard board control. Don't be afraid to use Fiery War Axe or Heroic Strike in order to take other minions out, sacrificing some of your own HP. As a warrior, you can always use your hero power to gain additional armor, and as such, warrior is just a class that likes to hit things with his own face. And yeah, just trade minions, um, but try to get efficient trades. So see if you can kill a minion without losing yours. And then you might even get two minions for one, especially in the case of things like Gurubashi Berserker or Stormwind Champion. And when you get a, um, a Warsong Commander in your hand and you're confident that your opponent can't kill it, try to summon it to the field. And if it remains for a turn, then you can pull all sorts of shenanigans by having a Charging Dragonling Mechanic or a Sinjin Shieldmaster or even a Gurubashi Berserker. So you should have some fun being able to play around with those kinds of things. And uh, tomorrow, since this is the last one this series, uh, it's been requested that I do a level 10 update. So I'm going to bring in level 10 versions of all nine decks, and I'm going to do it all in one long video where I explain which cards I took out and which ones I put in to make a slightly better deck. If you just started the game and you're level 1, don't worry too much because getting level 10 happens very quickly. Uh, you could, If you really played the game a bunch for a few days, you could easily hit level 10. It's not too difficult. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you want to uh, see the new video when I bring that out tomorrow for the level 10 versions, um, go ahead and subscribe and it should show up in your feed. And if you have any comments or questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, so thanks again, and see you all next time.